Hello, my name is Greg Genta and I'm a sales engineer with Fortinet. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how Forti Authenticator can do EPTLS authentication by verifying a certificate issued by a trusted certificate authority. So why is this interesting? It used to be with Forti Authenticator to do EPTLS authentication. The Forti Authenticator that was being used as the RADIUS authentication server generally also had to be the certificate authority that issued the certificate. And normally it would do a domain lookup to make sure that the host was a member of the domain. So so why should you care about this? Now, Forti Authenticator can use any certificate authority that organizations are using and authenticate devices using eTLS by only validating that the client certificate has been signed by a trusted certificate authority. An example of this would be organizations that are using a cloud certificate authority and using Microsoft Intune to distribute the certificates and using Azure AD and not a traditional Active Directory. An example of this would be organizations that are using a cloud certificate authority and using Microsoft Intune to distribute the certificates and using Azure AD and not a traditional AD can now use Forti Authenticator to do on-prem eTLS authentication using the cloud certificate authority or any other certificate authority. Another use case is that organizations can have multiple certificate authorities now and have all of their machines be able to connect to the same SSID and Forti Authenticator can authenticate all of those devices. Let's jump into the demo. Okay, I'm going to start by showing the radius policy that you need to create in Forti Authenticator to do eTLS. So you choose the RADIUS clients. In my scenario, it's the FortiGate or anything else that could potentially be sending RADIUS requests to Forti Authenticator. Here, this policy needs to match a RADIUS attribute. And the RADIUS attribute that I need to match is the SSID name. So the SSID that I'm using in my scenario is eTLS. And so this is looking for the SSID. And anything that matches this SSID of eTLS will use this policy. Here I'm choosing client certificates. Now notice instead of using certificate bindings, which would be the local 40 authenticator acting as a certificate authority, I am using trusted certificate authority certificates. So these I have imported into 40 authenticator, and these are other CAs that are not this 40 authenticator that is doing the eTLS. I'm adding both of these to this policy. And I have a host that has a certificate from each of these certificate authorities, and we are going to log in both of those devices, each of them with a certificate signed by a different certificate authority. And Forti Authenticator is going to allow that access. And here I'm sending group information that I can use with identity-based policies on the FortiGate if I wanted to. So now let's log in on the hosts. So this is a virtual machine that has a physical wireless network card in it. So we can connect to the eTLS SSID. I connect. The connection's successful. Now let's look how the supplicant is set up on this host. So we'll go to the security tab here. You'll choose smart card or other certificate. In this section, you will choose a certificate or root certificate that 40 Authenticator is using to start eTLS. So let me show you where that is. Back on 40 Authenticator, you go to certificates and notice this is a certificate that I'm using to start the EAP server on the 40 Authenticator. So this is actually a different certificate that on your host, you will want to trust to initiate the connection to the eTLS. It's not necessarily a requirement. If you don't have it, you will just get an error that you may have seen before that will say, are you sure you want to connect to this SSID because it's not necessarily trusted? That's because the certificate that started the EAP server is not trusted by the host if you get that error. If you know you're going to connect to that SSID and you know the certificate, then you can upload the root certificate to the host as well, and you wouldn't get that error. This is where you choose the root of the certificate that Forti Authenticator is using to start the EAP server. Now, to choose the certificate that you are actually connecting with, you don't actually choose the certificate, you choose the root of the cert that signed the cert that you have on the machine. So the cert on the machine was signed by this certificate authority, and so I just go in and choose that. Let's take a look at the certificate stores here on this machine, and hopefully this will make more sense. 
So under personal, this is the certificate that was signed by this CA up above there. So you can see the certificate path here. So this is the cer certificate that was signed by this certificate authority. And so here I choose this certificate authority, which the supplicant will then present this certificate because this is a certificate that has been signed by that certificate authority. So once you have that, that's all you need to do. And 40 Authenticator also has this root certificate installed and it is looking for that information. You have to put that here for a trusted CA is under certificates. And then again, in the policy, you call it out. We've already seen this, but let me just go through this really quick. And in the policy, you call out those certificate authorities as well. So that is this certificate authority right here that we're using for this computer. Now on the FortiGate, which is also my wireless controller, let's refresh here and we can see the host is connected. We can see its IP address and we can see that it's a member of the ETLS trusted CA group. Again, I can send that information to the FortiGate via a radius attribute. So let's look at another computer that is using a different certificate authority. So here's another host. We connect to ETLS. Connected. Let's look at wireless properties. Again, this is the local 40 authenticator that started its EAP server with a certificate. So I have uploaded that and trusted that. And then this computer is using the certificate that is issued from this certificate authority, which matches this one here. On the FortiGate, we can see that it is now connected and it is a member of that group. On the 40 Authenticator logs, we can see that each host was successful at logging in. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please contact the Fortinet sales team for your area. Thank you.